Hello, this is Salvatore Vinciguero. Welcome to this video on the St. Augustine Lighthouse in St. Augustine, Florida. One of the most enchanting places to visit in St. Augustine is the St. Augustine Lighthouse because no matter whether it's day or night, you can see this lighthouse from almost anywhere in the city of St. Augustine. If you're an early riser, this is one of the best places to get an early start on the day in St. Augustine when the lighthouse opens up at 9 a.m. And that's because there aren't a lot of tours and people here at this time of day, making it easy for you to climb the tower or the lighthouse up and down with all of these people getting in your way. Also keep in mind that they have a variety of different tours that happen in the evenings. They have the sunset moonrise tour, they have ghost tours, they have private tours which include dinner at the lighthouse and then you can go up into the lighthouse after dinner. There's a lens room tour. This is a very special lens. I'm going to show it to you in just a second and talk about it. And they also offer many programs for school groups and youth groups at the lighthouse. So as we're going up the iron staircase of the lighthouse, I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit of the history of the lighthouse. And then as we get to the top and we see the lens, I'm going to also be sharing with you some of the little history of the lens and how it works. The St. Augustine Lighthouse is the oldest permanent aid to navigation in North America. And they've had a series of old Spanish watchtowers put in this same location over a series of many hundreds of years. And uh, finally, um, this lighthouse was built between 1871 and 1874. And it is the oldest still active and working lighthouse in the United States of America. And so this is not the first St. Augustine lighthouse. The first lighthouse was actually located across a street and fell into the ocean in 1880. This was due to beach erosion, and the Spanish government originally built that lighthouse in the 1700s, and it was made out of coquina stone. Construction of this lighthouse began in 1871 and was completed by 1874 and put into service a new type of lens, the Fresnel lens. And this lens replaced earlier lamps within the tower that burned lard oil. And these particular lenses of the old style had silver reflectors and um, they were hard to maintain. And the Fresnel lens improved the lighthouse's range of the spectrum of the light and eliminated some of the maintenance issues that some of the old lard oil lighthouses had during that time period. In October of 1874, William Russell lit the lighthouse for the first time. He was the lighthouse keeper not only of the present tower that you see here, but also of the lighthouse that was of coquina stone that was lit many years before. The Fresnel lens was invented in 1822 by a French scientist, Augustin Fresnel. Consisting of hand-cut glass prisms in the shape of a beehive, the prisms are mathematically arranged to capture up to 70% of the light from the lamp. The rays of the light are bent or refracted by the prisms and collected into a steady horizontal sheet of brilliant light. As the lens rotates around the lamp, curved sections or flash panels called bull's eyes break up the beam and create the lighthouse's characteristic night signature. Fresnel lenses were originally divided into six orders or sizes. The St. Augustine light is the largest lens, a first order that has three bull's eyes and is approximately nine feet tall. It was made in St. Grobain near Paris, France. Its beam can be seen 19 to 25 nautical miles away. The St. Augustine Lighthouse lens was damaged by a vandal's bullet in 1986. Shut down by the Coast Guard in September of 1991, the lens was darkened. The St. Augustine Junior Service League, with funding from a variety of community and state grants, began the first attempt of restoration of the Fresnel lens in May of 1992. A community-wide celebration was held in May of 1993 when the beacon was relit.
the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary maintains the lighthouse as an active aid to navigation today. Now we're on the ground floor of the oil room and keeper's office. Can you imagine taking this bucket and carrying it all the way to the top of the lighthouse? Before 1936, we didn't have electricity. So from 1885 to 1936, they used kerosene oil in this particular lighthouse. And before that, lard oil from 1874 to 1885. After William Russell served the lighthouse for many years, William A. Harn of Philadelphia manned the lighthouse for 20 years afterwards. Major Harn was a Union war hero who has commanded his own battery of the Battle of Gettysburg. With his wife, Kate Skillen Harn of Maine, he had six daughters. The family was known for serving lemonade out on the porches of the keeper's house, which was constructed as a Victorian duplex during the Harn's tenure. On August 31st, 1886, the Charleston earthquake caused the tower to sway violently. This was according to the keeper's log, but there was no recorded damage. During World War II, Coast Guard men and women trained in St. Augustine and used the lighthouse as a lookout post for enemy ships and submarines which frequented the coastline. In 1907, indoor plumbing reached the light station, followed by electricity in the keeper's quarters in 1925. The light itself was electrified in 1936 and automated in 1955. As the light was automated, positions for the three keepers slowly dwindled down to two and then to one. No longer housing lighthouse families by the 1960s, the keeper's house was rented to local residents and eventually it was declared surplus, and St. John's County bought it in 1970. In that year, the house suffered a devastating fire at the hands of an unknown arsonist. In 1980, a small group of women in the Junior Service League of St. Augustine signed a 99-year lease with the county for the Keeper's House and surrounding grounds and began a massive restoration project. In 1994, the Lighthouse Museum of St. Augustine opened full-time to the public. The lighthouse went through many changes and organizations took ownership of different parts of it, going through the U.S. Coast Guard, through the Services Administration, and the National Park Service. And then finally, in 2016, the museum changed its name to the St. Augustine Lighthouse and Maritime Museum. This is the boat building experience that they have here at the lighthouse. It sits right next to the lighthouse and one day a week they have the boat builders come and work on the various boats that they have here in this shipyard. The volunteers are not present today but they would talk about um, the historical designs of these boats and the techniques that are native to the region that were used to build some of the boats here. When the boats are finished being built, the museum auctions off some of the boats to the public. And this is one way that the lighthouse is able to raise funds so that the lighthouse can continue to be maintained and restored over time. They also have a variety of research projects that take place not only here at the museum, but also in different areas of St. Augustine and in the water surrounding St. Augustine that are related to preserving maritime history. This area of the museum is called the Maritime Center Legends of the Light. Experience stories about lighthouses 1737 to 1955, including a view from the top for those unable to climb, a puppet theater, and hands-on activities for kids, and a ship model display. If you remember that when we went to the top of the lighthouse, that that was a first order Freno lens. This is an example of a fourth order Freno lens here at the Maritime Museum.
Now let's take a look inside of the Artifact Conservation Viewing Building. When artifacts are found and they need conservation, this is where they come to this part of the museum. And this is where we have many scientists working with archaeologists to do some research and try to preserve these artifacts so that they can be displayed in the museum here at the Maritime Museum. After visiting this part of the museum, I would highly suggest walking back to the 1876 Keeper's House exhibits. When you first walk in the house, you will see how head keeper William Harn's family lived here in the 1800s, and then you will walk through this exhibit. It is called Rat. Get hands-on in the Archaeological Discovery Lab and go down to the ocean floor to explore a shipwreck. Discovered by museum archaeologists offshore of St. Augustine, this shipwreck tells the tale of British East Florida at the end of the American Revolutionary War. Occasionally, the Maritime Museum brings in underwater explorers, researchers, and scientists to talk about how they are discovering and exploring the underwater seas and how these artifacts are important to preserving maritime history. Actually, in 2007, a banner year, and it was pretty much black this at all. Yeah. I think a few days we could see maybe. Yeah. But it was pretty much black yeah. and then like 2008 uh, and uh, that culminated in 2016 on the anniversary right. It can take a few hours to visit and really enjoy the entire museum and all of the grounds and gardens. It's important for you not to disregard some of these important boats that sit right in back of the gift shop. And that's because boats such as this, which are Native American in origin, are absolutely fascinating to learn about the historical nature of the ship, how they were constructed, and how researchers and scientists are still discovering dugout canoes that date back to 1090 through 1150. 
Some of the artifacts are even located inside of the gift shop, such as this cannon, which was excavated from a shipwreck that occurred in 1764. The St. Augustine Lighthouse and Maritime Museum is very family friendly and they have a variety of different activities for children of all ages. There are a variety of different demonstrations that occur throughout the day and I find that the people that actually work there who ask them questions about the exhibits and about the different things that you are viewing there can answer you very intelligently to tell you a little bit more about the history of the lighthouse. For children, this is especially a great museum as there are a lot of hands-on activities. As you're walking through the entire museum and different buildings, there's a maritime hammock scavenger hunt that the children participate in. And there's also a shipyard play area where the children can relieve some of their extra energy in between some of the wonderful experiences at the St. Augustine Lighthouse and Maritime Museum. This is Salvatore Vinciguerra. Thank you for watching this video on the St. Augustine Lighthouse in St. Augustine, Florida. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to this channel, and have a great day. Thank you.